My sister blew thousands on luxuries and now expects me to bail her out. But my family thinks I'm the villain for saying no. Hey everyone, I, 34F, need some perspective because my family is making me feel like the world's worst person right now. So for context, I've spent the last 10 plus years building my own online business from scratch. It wasn't easy. There were years of no sleep, constant stress and scraping by while I poured everything into this. Fast forward to now, and I'm doing well financially. Like, really well. But I worked hard for this. Nothing came easy, and I gave up a lot to get to where I am now. Then there's my younger sister, Amy, 29F. Amy has, well, a bit of a spending problem. She's always loved the finer things in life, designer bags, fancy vacations, expensive dinners, but unlike me, she doesn't really work for it. She just kind of floats between jobs or relies on credit cards to fund her lifestyle. Over the past few years, Amy's come to me for money multiple times. At first, it was small stuff, like needing help with rent or her credit card bills. And being her sister, I helped. I felt bad for her and thought maybe she'd get things under control. But she didn't. If anything, her spending habits just got worse. Every time I'd give her money, she'd go out and buy some luxury item or take a random trip to somewhere extravagant. A few weeks ago, she asked me for help again. This time, she wanted a lot of money to cover her debt. I'm talking thousands, and I just couldn't. I told her no, that I wasn't going to keep bailing her out unless she seriously changed her spending habits. I even suggested she start budgeting and maybe cut back on all the unnecessary stuff. Well, she didn't take that well. Amy accused me of being selfish and greedy. She said that because I'm doing well financially, it's cruel not to help her out when she's struggling. She even threw in that it's easy for me because I don't have the same pressures as she does. But here's the kicker. My family's on her side. My parents, who are aware of Amy's spending, are still saying I should help her because family helps family. They've been calling me cold and heartless for not giving her what she needs, saying that I'm just letting her drown while I'm sitting comfortably. And my cousins are backing them up, saying it's not a big deal for me since I'm financially well off now. But like, I worked my ass off to get here. I didn't just wake up one day with money. I sacrificed my social life, didn't travel for years, lived in a crappy apartment, all so I could build something for myself. And I feel like they're completely ignoring that part. They just see me as someone with money now, so they think it's my obligation to help her out. Honestly, I'm torn. I don't wanna be the sister who lets her family down, but I also feel like enabling Amy is doing her no favors. She's never going to learn to manage her finances if I keep rescuing her. Plus, I kind of feel like it's unfair for them to expect me to hand over my hard-earned money because she can't control her spending. So, Aida for saying no? Should I just suck it up and help her out again, or am I right to put my foot down this time? Update one. I wanted to give you an update on the situation with my sister Amy and my family. First off, thank you so much for the thoughtful advice and support you all provided on my last post. It really helped me to gain perspective and navigate what's been a very challenging situation. After the family meeting, where things got pretty intense, I held firm on my decision not to give Amy any more financial support. I didn't want to enable her continued irresponsible spending, but I was still deeply concerned about her well-being. That's when things took an unexpected turn. A week after the meeting, Amy reached out to me with a confession that was shocking. She admitted that her financial situation was far worse than she had let on. It wasn't just about her extravagant lifestyle. She had been involved in a scheme with a predatory lender. This lender was notorious for high interest loans and aggressive collection tactics. Amy had been borrowing money from this lender to keep up her lavish lifestyle, and it was clear that she was in over her head. Amy explained that the lender had been threatening her with legal action and harassment. She had been hiding this from everyone because she was terrified of the repercussions. It was a desperate situation, and she needed help, not just financially, but also in dealing with the legal and emotional fallout. I immediately felt a rush of concern and knew that I had to help her, but not in the way she had initially hoped. I connected her with a financial lawyer who specializes in dealing with predatory lending. 
This lawyer was able to offer her advice on how to handle the threats from the lender and helped her to negotiate a plan to manage her debt more effectively. It wasn't just about managing debt, though. Amy also agreed to start seeing a therapist to address the underlying issues behind her spending habits. Her financial behavior was clearly tied to deeper personal issues, and she recognized that she needed professional help to work through them. The revelation was a turning point. My family was initially still upset with me for not giving Amy money, but once they understood the seriousness of the situation and the predatory nature of the lender, they became more supportive of the approach I was taking. It was clear that enabling Amy wasn't going to solve her problems. She needed real help and guidance. Amy started attending therapy sessions and working with the financial lawyer. It was a long road ahead, but she was making an effort to tackle her issues head on. I remained firm in my decision not to provide direct financial assistance, but offered emotional support and encouragement. As Amy began to make progress, she started to share her story more openly. She wrote a detailed account of her experience with the predatory lender and her journey to seek help. To her surprise, the post gained traction online and received attention from consumer protection organizations and media outlets. It was a bittersweet moment. While the attention brought more stress, it also brought support and resources that Amy hadn't anticipated. Overall, it's been a tough but eye-opening experience. I'm hopeful that with professional help and a more transparent approach, Amy will be able to turn things around. I'll continue to offer my support in the ways that I can and keep you updated as her situation progresses. Thanks again for all your help and advice. Update 2. I wanted to give you another update on the situation with Amy and how things have been evolving since my last post. The journey has been anything but straightforward, but there have been some notable developments that I wanted to share with you. After Amy's confession about her involvement with the predatory lender and her commitment to seeking professional help, she began making strides in managing her financial situation and addressing her personal issues. Working with the financial lawyer and therapist, Amy was starting to get a handle on her debt and the underlying reasons for her spending habits. However, Things took another unexpected turn when Amy discovered that the predatory lender was not only harassing her, but also involved in fraudulent activities beyond just high-interest loans. The lender was running a scam that involved misleading clients and using aggressive tactics to intimidate borrowers. Amy found out that they had been falsifying documents and threatening legal action that wasn't legitimate. With this new information, Amy and her financial lawyer took action. They reported the fraudulent activities to the relevant authorities and consumer protection agencies. The investigation into the lender's practices was launched, and Amy's story was highlighted in several news articles. This brought a mix of relief and further complications. The increased attention put more pressure on the lender, but also exposed Amy to public scrutiny. Despite the stress, Amy used the exposure to her advantage. She leveraged the media attention to raise awareness about predatory lending and advocate for better consumer protections. Her blog, which had initially been a personal project, gained significant traction and attracted a larger audience. She began sharing not only her personal journey, but also valuable information about financial literacy and consumer rights. Amy's efforts paid off in unexpected ways. She was invited to speak at a financial wellness conference, where she shared her story and insights with a broader audience. The conference gave her a platform to connect with financial experts and advocacy groups, which provided her with additional resources and support. On the personal front, Amy continued to work on her therapy and financial management. She was making progress with her debt repayment plan and had started building a small emergency fund. It wasn't an easy process, but there were signs of positive change. My relationship with Amy has improved significantly. We've been having more open and honest conversations and there's a newfound understanding between us. My parents have also come around to appreciating the approach we've taken. They've seen the positive changes in Amy and have become more supportive of both her efforts and my decision not to provide direct financial assistance. It's been a challenging journey, but there have been many positive developments. Amy is on a path to recovery and our family dynamics are improving. I'll keep you updated as things continue to progress. Thanks again for all your support and advice. Update three, I wanted to provide one final update on the situation with Amy and how things have evolved over the past few months. It's been a long and winding road, but I'm grateful to share some positive news and reflections on the journey. Since my last update, 
Amy has continued to make significant progress in her financial recovery and personal growth. Her involvement in raising awareness about predatory lending and advocating for consumer protections has had a considerable impact. She's become a recognized voice in the fight against financial exploitation, and her blog has grown into a respected platform for discussing financial literacy and consumer rights. Amy's speaking engagements and advocacy work have opened doors for her to collaborate with various organizations and experts in the field. She's been working closely with these groups to develop resources and support systems for others who are struggling with similar issues. Her efforts have not only helped her, but have also made a positive difference in the lives of many others. On the financial front, Amy has made substantial progress. She's successfully negotiated with her creditors and has been following a disciplined budget plan. Her debt is gradually decreasing and she's managed to save a small amount each month. The progress is slow but steady and she's committed to maintaining her newfound financial discipline. Amy's personal life has also improved. She's developed healthier habits and is more focused on her well-being. Her therapy sessions have been instrumental in helping her address the root causes of her spending habits and she's developed a more balanced approach to life. A relationship has grown stronger through this process. We've worked through our past issues and have developed a deeper understanding and respect for each other. My parents have also been more supportive and appreciative of the progress Amy has made. They've recognized the value of the approach we took and have been more involved in supporting her efforts. Reflecting on the journey, I'm proud of how far Amy has come and grateful for the support and advice I receive from all of you. It was a difficult situation, but it's been rewarding to see positive changes and growth. Thank you for being a part of this journey and for your continued support. I'll be closing this update here, but I'll always be grateful for the insights and encouragement you provided. It made a significant difference in how we navigated this challenging time. Thanks again, everyone.